Hello everyone. As we get ready to start looking at some of the analytical tools that we'll be looking at in this class, I wanted to again make sure that everybody's kind of on a baseline. And so we're going to take a look real quick at a couple of descriptive statistical uh, definitions so that we can, um, so I can be sure that you all know or have a fund fundamental understanding of some concepts, which you probably mostly already know. Um, we're going to take a look at these items. They're all descriptive statistics as opposed to inferential statistics, which we will not talk about in this class. Um, but descriptive statistics is basically some tools that tell us what's in the data set. Um, and they're really common tools that are used in many organizations, whether it be business or other organizations. Um, and some of the three most common tools are things like um, average, um, mean, median, and mode. So um, average and mean, of course, being the same thing. And when you look at many of the reports that are put out by businesses and universities and organizations, a lot of times you'll see that average values for average things like average sales, average costs, average employee salaries, average student GPAs, those kinds of things. Um, so it's good to understand exactly how we're calculating those. And then I'll show you how to do it in Excel. Median and mode are also two other ways of being able to sort of zero in on what we call central tendency. And that is, you know, just basically if you take a data set, what's the mean of the data set? What's the average? What's the middle of the data set? So what's the center of the data set? And what can we learn from that information? With range, we begin to look at how widely varied the data set is. And I'll show you a little bit in this presentation how to calculate range. And then we're also going to take a quick look at standard deviation and variance. Um, I don't expect you to remember too much about variance. Just understand that there is measures that vary how much the data are varied in a data set. But standard deviation is important because standard deviation, mean and standard deviation are the two things that you hear about the most. When you get somebody reporting out that the mean of a certain value or set of values is X and the standard deviation is Y, that tells you something. It tells you what the average is and it tells you how much variance there is in the data set. So we'll talk a little bit about each of those. Let's start with mean. Mean is basically the average. Um, and how do we calculate mean? Well, we first of all, we add up all the values and we divide by the number of values. So many of you are probably familiar with the way to do that. This formula here shows us how to do that. Bar x is actually a symbol for the mean. So the mean of x, some variable in a data set. What we do is we sum up all of x and we divide by the number of variable or num number of values that we had that was actually used to create or add up x. So x bar is a symbol that we use for the mean of x. The summation of x is to add them all up and n is the number of numbers we just added up. Um, and like I said, you probably calculated this um, in uh, Excel before or probably calculated means before. And so what I'm going to do is show you how to do it in Excel. Here we have a list of numbers. And in Excel, we actually have a function. Now, all functions in Excel begin with the equal sign. So we're going to go ahead and pop in the equal sign there. And that's Excel's indicator that we're about to do a function. Now, there are many, many functions in Excel. Um, and if you're familiar with Excel, you're probably familiar with a lot of them. But this one in particular is average. So we type in average. It does not matter if it's lowercase or uppercase. And we indicate the range. And the range is indicated by starting with A1. A1 is the cell that we're beginning with. And we're going all the way down to A13. So we'll do A1. And then we put a colon between them. And A, A13 is the end of the range and it gives us the value. And the value is 14.30. So that is the average of this set of numbers using the average function in Excel. A little bit more about functions. Um, they're entered manually, or you can select them from dropdowns. There are dropdowns in some of the menus where you can just pick the function that you want. They're always preceded with an equal sign to indicate that it is a function. In Excel, at the, bo uh, at the bottom of a list of numbers, you can use the average function to calculate the mean. Just I showed you just now, it wasn't 100 numbers, it was only 13. And this would be the function that you would use if you actually had 100 numbers. Uh, we already looked at an example, so we'll move on. Median is the middle number, or middle numbers. If, it depends on whether or not you have an odd number of total numbers or an even number of total numbers. In our first example here, we have an odd number. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the middle number is 3. You do that by putting them in order and eliminating one from both ends until you get down to the single one that's in the middle. The challenge that you get is sometimes it's an even number. And when you get to the middle, we could have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If we eliminated from both ends, we're going to wind up with 3 and 4. 
And what we do in that case is we actually add 3 to 4 and we divide by 2 to come up with 3.5, which would actually be our median in that example. Why do we use medians? Because median is used to protect us from outliers. What is an outlier? Outlier is an extreme value. Um, so in our case, our example of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, what if the last number that we had in our list was 10? You can imagine that our, our mean is going to be much higher because that number 10 is going to pull that mean far higher than it would be if it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Means, or sorry, outliers can be very valid measures or they can be mistakes. Um, or they could be very valid measures that don't really mean that much, so we could eliminate them. Um, how we deal with outliers it depends completely on the situation, but median protects us from outliers. And so we can get something that looks a little bit closer to the mean, even if we have a lot of variation on either side, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be impacted so badly by any outlier or anything that's lying outside or way far away from the mean. So in the example that we use up here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the median is 3. And in an example that I have down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, the median is still 3. And you can see how this outlier of 10 did not throw off our, uh, our actual calculation of median. We have another example is we use median for home values because there could be extreme outliers. So in the Seattle area, there are some very, very expensive homes. And so oftentimes when your home value is reported, they will use median home value because that's basically the middle of the range. And those that are multi-million dollar homes are not having such an impact um, as if we were to be using mean. There is a median function in Excel, um, and it is called equal sign median, and it will return the middle value. And um, in this example, this should say, what if there is an even number of numbers? And I've told you already what you do is you take the two middle numbers and you divide them by two. So let's look at the example in Excel. Come down here, we do equal sign median give it the same range, A1, A13, and it gives us a median of 15. And I, without putting these in order, I am presuming that we have a median of 15. Since we have three 15s, it's likely, and kind of even scatter around that kind of visually, it's likely that 15 is in fact our median. The next one we look at is mode, and mode is simply the most common value. It's the one that shows up the most. And this, this can be useful if you're measuring, for example, a list of people in three different groups, and group two just shows up the most. So for whatever reason, that's important, and group two is your mode, or the number two could be your mode. Mode is typically a numeric value. It's not used as much because it has less practical value. It's only really valuable in certain situations, uh, but it's used when you need to know what number appears the most common in your data. The problem is, is that there can be either one, well, there's three scenarios. There can either be one mode, which is the most convenient and easy way to do it. There can be more than one mode, which in which um, you could have, for example, four and five appear three times in the data set, and that is going to give you two modes. It's going to be bimodal or multimodal if you have more than two. Or there's no mode. There's no number that appears more than one time in the data set, so there really is no mode. We can do this in Excel in two ways. We can either do mode dot SNGL, which basically says we believe there to be a single mode. In our data set that we just looked at, it looks like 15 is going to be the one that shows up the most. So we probably do have the mode SNG, uh, we can use the mode SNGL function um, when we believe we have one mode. If we have multiple modes, um, the mode SNGL function will fail and it won't give us the modes because it's there's more than one. So we use mode dot MULT um, and that's when there we think there's a reasonable chance of multiple modes. And let's look at an example. Go back up to the one directly below. Equals mode dot s n g l a one colon a thirteen. It gives me fifteen, and that makes sense because if you look, I've got a fifteen here, and another fifteen here, and I got another fifteen here. I don't see any other number that repeats three three or more times. And so the mode single would work fine. The mold multiple probably would throw an error because there's not it's not bimodal or multimodal. So we get to actually use Excel to calculate how this is going to work. Range. Range is how we can determine how wide our data set is. And this starts to give us an indication of how much variation there is in the data set. When we brought in our data set, we were able to calculate a mean of a little more than 14. Now what we want to know is we want to know how close 
do all of the data points, all 13 data points, how close are they to that mean? That has big implications for the variability of the data, how much we can trust the results that we're getting, or just overall, if you if you have like uh, average sales for the month, um, and you track that for 12 months, and you have a wide range of variation amongst the different months, um, that's actionable evidence, actionable information that you can use. So we care, we start to care about range, um, and we want to know how big is the range, how close are the data points to the mean, or how far are they away from the mean. To calculate range, what we do is we simply take the lowest value in your data set, and you subtract it from the highest, and that becomes your range. It's as simple as that, and there's really you don't really even need Excel to do that. If we were to go over and take a look at Excel now, we can see that the highest value in our range is 24, the lowest value in our range is 8. If we subtract 8 from 24, we're going to get a range of 16, and that's the range for this data set. So that's useful to know, um, and it's useful to know only kind of at a high level, um, but it is giving us an idea of the variation of our data. One more key thing, there's actually two more key things coming. One of which is variance. Now this is something that is a little more statistics based and it tells us exactly how much variation there is in the data set. And the way that we do this, the simplest way to explain it, is that we calculate the mean. In our example it was 14. Let's go back to Excel and I can show you this better in Excel. We calculated the mean, it was 14.3. If we want to know how much variation there is in our data set, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to take each data point and we're going to subtract 14.3 from that data point. And that's going to give us a measure. Sometimes it'll be negative and sometimes it'll be positive. But anyway, we sum all that up. We sum all that variation up, the absolute value of all that variation up, um, and we come up with a measure of variance. The higher the variance, the less chance there is that the data points in your data set hover around the mean. The lower the variance, the more chance that the data points in your data set are hovering around the mean. And so that gives us a very much more clear indication other than range, which was just 16. This gives us a much better indication of just how close each of your data points is to the mean. The way that we calculate this is we actually take um, our variance is equal to, this is what, remember what we used to sum up the uh, well, well, actually part of what we used to sum up the mean. It was a summation of x. So now what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to take the mean, remember the mean is x bar, we're going to subtract it from every data point, and the reason why we square it is because when we get negatives, a negative times a negative becomes a positive, so everything then is positive, and we add all those up, and then we divide it by the number of data points minus one, and that gives us our variance. I don't expect you to remember that math, but I think it's useful for you to understand that this is really the way that we can determine if the data points in our data set are close to the mean or far away from the mean. The next point I want to make is standard deviation, and this is the one I do want you to remember. Standard deviation and mean are the two things you're going to hear about the most. When you calculate a mean, you're going to determine at some point how much variation there is in your data, and you determine that in the way that I just showed you. And the variation means how far are your data points away from the mean. With standard deviation, what we're doing is we're taking this big pool of variation that comes from checking the data points, each data point against the mean, and we're dividing it or averaging it across all of the data points. So it becomes an average variation, really is what it is, more likely referred to as standard deviation. So it is the average amount that each of your data points differs from the mean. It's commonly used in business and other applications. It's derived from the variance because it's the square root of the variance. So here's the formula there, and I don't expect you to remember that, but I'll just put it in there. There are two ways to calculate this in Excel. We can either calculate the standard deviation using the functions standard deviation.s, which is what we would use if we were calculating a standard deviation of a sample. Or, more likely, you're going to be using standard deviation.p, which is what we will use to calculate the standard deviation of the population. And when we're doing analysis on data sets, chances are we will be doing the standard deviation.p because we're using the entire data set. We did not have to take a sample of that data set to do the work we want to do. So we'll more likely use the standard deviation.p. You'll notice if you run both of these side by side that the standard deviation for the sample will be slightly higher, meaning that it's more conservative. And that's because if we're just looking at a sample, we can't always be sure that the sample truly represents the population. So we come up with a slightly higher standard deviation, and that gives us more confidence in the value that we have. 
I'm going to take you to Excel first before I talk to you about the exercise. Let's go ahead and run these standard deviations. This is the population standard deviation. Remember, we're going to go with A1 to A13. Capitals and smalls don't matter here, but that does. And our standard deviation is 4.68. Let's run the same thing for standard deviation of the sample, assuming that this was a sample. And that standard deviation, as I indicated for the sample, is going to be slightly higher. It's going to input more error, more variance into this, because it's looking at a sample and can't be 100% sure, sure, sure that it's representative of the population. But this is the population standard deviation. So the two things we would care about the most are where the 14.03 or 4.30, that's our mean, and our standard deviation. So for this data set of 13 numbers, we can report out that the mean is 14.3 with a standard deviation of 4.68. And those are the two things that we care about, and those are the things we'll be discussing as we go forward in the course. All right, on this next slide, I've given you a, a table. These are three um, <coughs> scores, three average scores, or three scores, three lists of scores. There are 10 numbers in each set. What I would like you to do is go through, and um, on the next slide, I'll tell you exactly what I want you to do. Calculate the mean, median, and mode and range for each of the columns. Then calculate the standard deviation in the, uh, for the sample of the sample, I should say, of the sample for each column. That's standard uh, stdev.s. And then calculate the standard deviation of the population for each column, so stdev.p. Put these, well, so first of all, put these numbers into a spreadsheet. So let's go back, actually, go here. And we'll go back this way, yes. Take these numbers and put them into a spreadsheet. So you just have to go into Excel, open a three-column spreadsheet, put the labels in a score one, score two, score three, and put these numbers into Excel. And then the next thing I'll have you do is under each, calculate the mean, the median, and the mode, and the range for each column. Then calculate standard deviation. So underneath each of the columns that you have here, you'll have five more cells. You'll have mean, median, mode, standard deviation, actually mean, median, mode, range, standard deviation for the population, and standard deviation for the sample. So that should be fairly straightforward, I would think. When you have that done, go ahead and turn the spreadsheet in to your preliminary module uh, exercise, and that should be enough stats that we need to talk to for now. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns.